and I need a volunteer. I need a student who actually is wearing preferably not all cotton, but I think, Simon, you have a beautiful, wonderful nylon parker. So if you are willing to sacrifice a little bit for the sake of science and come over here and sit down here, just relax. Make sure that your feet are off the ground. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, Simon, I'm going to beat you with a cat fur. <laughs> and as I beat you with cat fur, you will get charged. And since I don't want you to be the only person who suffers under this experiment, I will also stand on an insulated stool so if you become, for instance, positively charged, I don't know whether it's positive or negative, I would get the other amount of charge. So we share in the charge. And as I beat you, <laughs> you will charge up more and more, and I will charge up more and more. And then we will have to convince the class that, um, that we are both charged. And we will do that in a way that will be, hopefully, rather convincing. <laughs> I, um, let me just start beating you a little bit <laughs> to make you feel at home. We know each other, right? OK. Now, of course, as I mentioned to you, these experiments work well when it is dry. And so if you are too wet, it won't work. But let's see, if you sweat a little bit too much, then it doesn't work too well. So are you ready? <laughs> I have here in my hand a neon flash tube. And although we don't know yet what voltage is, because we will learn about that in this course. To get a good flash out of this, you need about uh, a few thousand volts. And so we will see, and we'll make it dark shortly, and I will hold the flashlight, the flash light in one hand, the neon discharge tube, and then Simon will touch it on the other side. And if we succeed it, <laughs> then you may see some light. Simon, look at me first. Don't touch it yet, because we're going to make it all the way dark. You know where it is? It's there. OK, make it dark, uh, Marcos. Touch it. Touch it. OK, thank you. Can we have some light? Thank you very much. Equal charges repel each other. I've shown that the demonstration with the balloons. Here we have an instrument which is called the Van de Graaff. It's named after Professor Van de Graaff, who invented it. He was an MIT professor. And this instrument, which I will not discuss in any detail now, but you will understand it later on in the course. I'll tell you all about it later. This, think of this instrument as a super amber rod. And although we don't know yet what voltage is, I mentioned already the 20,000 volts between Simon and me, in this instrument you have to think in terms of several hundred thousand volts. So this instrument is not without danger. But that, of course, makes it more exciting to work with it. <laughs> so it's a super amber rod. And what I will do first now is to put some confetti on top. And when we turn on the Van de Graaff, the confetti may at first go to the charge dome. It is already on top of it. And when it picks up some of the charge, it will then spread out because it, it will repel. And so let's get some, some light on there which will make it a little bit better to see. 
Mm. Let me put some of this on top. It's just regular confetti, pieces of paper. All right, now all I have to remember is how to start the Most of the action has already occurred. I will put a little bit more on. <laughs> if you see sparks, don't worry yet. More on. Well, nothing left for the second class. <laughs> <laughs> Make it perhaps a little darker. Ah, that's too dark. <laughs> okay. We'll try it once more, I'll give it a zap. So look at the confetti on top. And I think it's quite convincing. Some of the confetti will stay there. Well, that's for reasons that it's not a good conductor. And so it gets it first sucked in, and if it doesn't get charge of the Van der Graaff, then it will not spread out. All right. So now, let's try for the first time to be a little bit more...